Next on Good Taste. Wow! We're celebrating a dining destination like no other. The wine was great, the food is wonderful, the service is fantastic. Deep in the heart of the hill country, this historic building is making history once again. A 10 out of 10 in our book. See why the new Roaring Twenties are back in Bernie. Cheers. Plus, it's been our tastiest season yet, and we're rounding up some of the best dishes from season seven. Oh, whoa. And we're headed to a palace where an armadillo is king. It's about as Texas as you could get. Good Taste starts right now. Hi everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. Welcome to the heart of the hill country, historic Bernie, Texas. This picturesque German town is filled with friendly faces, fun shopping, and some incredibly good eats and spirits, especially at the oldest bar in the hill country, where this 100 year old spot just might host a ghost or two as well. Roaring Twenties are roaring again at Richter Tavern in Bernie. Great food, great atmosphere. Here in the heart of the hills, Bernie is a town filled with tradition. But Bernie never tasted like this before. These Brussels sprouts are to die for. Or try the uber popular Akaushi New York Strip. So delicious, sitting on a bed of creamy garlic mashed potatoes which alone could make a meal. Or the juicy Richter burger with bacon, cheese, and all the fixins on sinfully delicious house-made bread with jalapeno mayo. And by popular demand, they even serve sushi. It's very good. The wine was great. The food is wonderful. The service is fantastic. The atmosphere is nice. We didn't expect kilts. <laughs> The multi-level repurposed building features a bakery, a coffee shop, and a full-blown signature restaurant. I love the ambiance of Richter's. There are three bars. Well, I keep coming back because my husband comes all the time too. <laughs> Keeping with the spirit of the Roaring Twenties, Richter Tavern features black and white silent films projected on the walls here and artwork showing silent film icons like Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. Bridging the past to the present, Richter Tavern also features live entertainment. Well, they call me the fireman. That's my name. This hundred year old building has seen its share of history, beginning with how this used to be a car garage for Model T's. This is awesome. It's original, restored. Uh, yeah, actually, it's in great shape. It's a 1922 Model T coupe. About a hundred years ago, this building was full of them. We had, you could fit about 20 of them all throughout there and all lined the mechanics. Up. Yep, they'd be lined up and working on them. This antique bar dating back to 1869 has been around the block a few times too. We always live within a half a mile of here for about 151 years. So this very historic bar known as the Bessler Bar and it was actually named after a former Bernieite, right? From Absolutely. Maybe many years ago. Max Bessler bartended behind this bar from the, the late 1860s all the way through 1938, 39 when he actually passed away, he owned this bar. And some say the spirit of Max might still be hanging around his old watering hole. During construction specifically, the construction crews would come by, notice that somebody was at the bar. And so when they turn to get their tool bag and look back to ask them what they're doing there, no one was there. So the second time that happened, they took off and never came back. So I lost Aww. that construction crew. The spirits we encountered around here were quite inviting and very refreshing. Cheers. Neither one of you were in the restaurant business before <laughs> no. coming up with this incredible place that is now Richter's. How in the world did you decide to do this? There was an opportunity for us to both make a career change and have a historic building with a lot of history, a lot of colorful history too. 
and, uh, and just trying to find neat ways of integrating that into our business model has been a lot of fun. You can have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and three different places, and then have a martini in the club afterwards. With Joey in charge of wines, what could be more fun than popping a cork with an axe? Wow! That easy. Don't try that at home. No. <laughs> I took a crack at it using a sword. After four years of meticulously restoring the century-old building, Richter's opened just in time for the pandemic. But Bernie welcomed the new eatery with open arms. I can't speak highly enough of the community and the support that they've given us over time. They're just such great people. Everybody here in town has been super nice and we love them so much. I just feel like I'm part of their family now. A popular dish here is the spicy Creole shrimp and grits with a four-year aged cheddar for extra flavor. And we've got the recipe. We want to get your uh, vegetable stock uh, to a boil, and we add raw white grits. And we just put it in here, stirring. And it takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Fresh gulp shrimp join a parade of flavors, including garlic, andouille sausage, and even spicy Creole mustard. <laughs> Getting a steam bath over here, but it's all good. It smells amazing. Best part, always. Ooh, I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Save room for an enormous cinnamon roll, fresh from the Richter Bockhaus Bakery. Or try this Hill Country favorite, dreamy peach cobbler topped cheesecake. <laughs> Truly, happy days are here again when you visit Richter Tavern where there's something for everyone. A 10 out of 10 in our book. Well, here's cheers to many, cheers. many years of success. Cheers. So Thank glad you. you guys are Thank in Bernie. You. Thank you. Hope you're still hungry. We are in the Goya kitchens with the executive chef, Fernando Desa, making a delicious dish. If you love empanadas, this is something you're gonna wanna really make at home, right? It's true, we're making a delicious carimagnola. It's a traditional street food made in Colombia, and it's delicious. First, we're gonna get our Goya frozen yuca. We defrost it, we took the excess water out, add some melted butter, eggs. Then after that, we're gonna add our Goya mazarepa. It's a pre-cooked corn flour. Yeah, it's a great white corn meal, so if you're looking for one, look for the Goya one, it is good. And then to add more flavor, we're gonna add our Goya adobo with pepper. Now once everything is mixed, we're gonna cover with plastic wrap, All right. put it in the fridge, so nice and set. About how long? About one hour. So now we're gonna make the filling. First, in a half pan, we're gonna add our Goya Sauvignon Olive Oil Organic. Uh, it's my favorite, you know that. We're gonna add ground beef. We're gonna season with some Goya adobo with pepper. To finish it up, some Goya Sofrito, perfect cooking base. Yeah, it will cut your cooking time in half, oh, truly. Yeah. And we're gonna keep cooking for two to three more minutes. Then let it cool down, that way we can make the carimagnolas. We get the dough, very simple, with a spoon. We just preheat some corn oil, and I put the carimagnolas in. We're just gonna fry them. The carimagnolas are golden brown, like we wanted it. Just yeah, like they're these. perfect. Now they're ready to eat. Good, right? Mm, I love that. This is a winner, as always. We have the recipe online. Fernando, thank you. Thank you. Coming up, whether you want good eats or great drinks, around here, you're in good company. Everything here has always been really good. But first. That is really <laughs> delicious. Oh my God. Thank you, Angie. A dish you can't resist. Coming right up. Cisco, at the heart of food and service. What a season, right? From spicy Cajun seafood to smoking Texas barbecue. We've tasted some amazing eats on our culinary journey. It's all so good. Some are hard to beat. So here are some of my favorites. The best of the best. The Brisket Smoke Show from Curry Boys Barbecue in San Antonio is a dish I can't stop talking about. Wow. A thing of beauty. Thank you very much. Wow, look at that, look at your crust, whoa. Perfectly marbled, this juicy beef brisket is phenomenal all by itself. 
but topped with Chef Cap's creamy curry, it goes to the next level. I'm gonna join you. Mm. Oh yeah. It's good stuff, huh? Who would have thought you could pair brisket with curry? That's a winner, I think. That's, that's my favorite dish for sure. I love it. I also love just about everything that comes out of Pearl and Vine's kitchen in Katy, a spot that takes humble corn to a whole new level. We probably go through 10 cases of corn a week. That corn just might be the secret ingredient to these melt-in-your-mouth crab cakes. Made with lump crab meat over cream corn with pea and corn shoots, tagine, and lime. I love every single bite. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, whoa. That is Not amazing. Bad. I may Don't lick the plate with that corn. That is Don't over work, the guys. top. I also need to give a huge shout out to Pearl and Vine's one of a kind Caesar salad, complete with cornbread croutons. We do a grilled corn and cotija mix. I love it. That, this that may be my all time good. favorite Caesar salad. Awesome. Truly. Thank you this so is much. Over the I top. appreciate it. I found another over-the-top dish over the state line in Abbeville, Louisiana. The Eggplant Abbeville at Dupuis Seafood and Steak is a true tower of treasure. It is delicious, right? Oh, so yes. good, and it's really not difficult to make. Stacked golden fried eggplant medallions and sweet jumbo lump crab drenched in Dupuis white wine Cajun caper cream sauce. What's not to love? Ching ching. That's amazing. That is so rich. Man, that's good. Not to be outdone, fellow Cajuns up the road at Little Big Cup in Arnoldville have also earned their place at the table. This one-of-a-kind Cajun po' boy is in a class all by itself. Truly a sight to behold. Wow. Oh, it's wonderful. It's a recipe that screams everything from the bayou, right? Yes, ma'am. And then we sell hundreds of these a week. All right. Cheers. Ooh. That is over the top. That little white bread crunch. Yes, ma'am. That's delicious. Mmm. Mm. This job sure has its perks. At Interstellar Barbecue in Austin, you better believe brisket is king. But you haven't lived until you've tried the savory, smoked, scalloped potatoes with Gouda cheese. Layers of potatoes with tons of garlic, and salt, and cream, and cheese, all the things that make oh potatoes great. Oh my gosh, and smoke. Yeah, and smoke. That's phenomenal. Rich, cheesy goodness with a nice smoky crust. It's top notch for sure. Our last stop is top notch too. At Smoky Rose in Dallas, smoke is the cornerstone of cuisine. The only thing that does not get smoked here is our ribeye and our hamburger. Okay. Everything else is smoke. When all that smoke clears, feast your eyes on this. A true Texas original. The incredible chicken fried brisket is absolutely to die for. Served with creamy mashed potatoes and good old country gravy. It's one of a kind and it's fantastic. The brisket was phenomenal. It might be some of the best I've ever had. So there you have it, some of the best dishes of the season. You can try them yourself because we have the recipes at goodtaste.tv. Bon appetit. Mealtime is a lot more fun and a lot more delicious with John Soul's Southern Style Tenders. And we're going to show you a delicious dish. I'm with Claire Soles in the John Soul's Kitchen. We're kind of heading to Nashville for this one, right? Yeah, so this is a really fun take on Nashville hot chicken. We're gonna make a Nashville hot mayo. To put I love with it. our sliders. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is put our southern style tenders in the oven and these are already fully cooked. So really all we're doing is just warming them through and that's the best part. It is so easy. While our chicken's cooking, we are going to go ahead and make our Nashville hot mayo. So the first thing we're going to do is add some butter. Of course, to right? The skillet. I mean, you have to. We're gonna go ahead and put in a mixture of cayenne pepper, paprika, brown sugar, onion powder, and garlic powder. Lots of flavor going on there. Oh yeah. And a little bit of white vinegar, and a pinch of salt and pepper. And just whisk that together. We're gonna take it off the heat, and we're gonna add the mayo to it. 
This mayo is going to have a lot of flavor. All right, and then we're ready to take our chicken out. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to put our buns out. And the bottom, we're going to do a little spoonful of our Nashville hot mayo. Sweet relish on there. Next, we're going to put our southern style tenders on. All right. And then some pepper jack cheese, so another kind of layer of spice. Cheers! <laughs> They're really good. Oh, that is delicious, and I love that hot spices mayo. Mm -hmm. Claire, yeah. thank you. We've got the recipe online. Thank you. Coming up, it's the most wonderful wine of the year. But first, one bite of this dreamy pie and you'll be in pecan heaven. There's just something about a Texas pecan pie, right? Wait till you see what else is on the menu next. We'd love to share good taste. Head to our website at goodtaste.tv where you'll find delicious recipes from top chefs, my latest wine finds, and restaurant recommendations. Plus, you can see all of our episodes right here. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter while you're there. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. Kick up your spurs. We're Texas two-stepping our way through Armadillo Palace, a bona fide tribute to the Lone Star State. It's about as Texas as you could get. Part restaurant, part dance hall, part legend. I'm telling you, this place is like a Texas museum. <laughs> it is. There's carne asada with handmade tortillas, spit roasted chicken over blazing hot mesquite, and desserts you'll thank your lucky stars for. Now, there's just something about a Texas pecan pie, right? It all started with the late Jim Good, a barbecue pit master with a dream. My father was a commercial graphic artist, and my mother was an elementary school teacher. So it was my father's dream, and, and she decided to stop teaching school and, and um, help him uh, get the restaurant off the ground. That original barbecue joint is still smoking brisket right next door. The Good family also owns a seafood restaurant and a taqueria across the street. With a hoppin' dance hall, a bar stocked with 138 kinds of whiskey, and Texas trinkets and trophies around every corner, Armadillo Palace sure stands out. Everything in the space here is all you know, stuff we've personally co collected and, and curated over many, many years. It was in Cody, Wyoming, where they stumbled across their biggest find. While we're kind of driving around the outskirts of town, we look over and this armadillo sit in the back of this gravel parking lot. That iconic armadillo now keeps watch right out front. But don't forget what you came for. The buttery redfish on the half shell is a good family standout. Everything here has always been really good. That goes for desserts too. And Levi's grandmother's famous Brazos bottom pecan pie. It's really good. Your grandma was a good cook. She was. Levi knows his way around the kitchen too. His carne discada is a time-honored Texas tradition. It was really good. Even if you're not a true Texan, you're gonna feel like one at Armadillo Palace. It's the perfect ode to Texas. Thank you. Cheers. Here's to you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Time for my wine finds, and I'd love to revisit some of the really fun finds of the season. So I've got some of my favorites right here. Up first, a delightful Chardonnay from Washington State by Sokol Blosser. This gem has flavors of juicy pears, apples, even toasty bread notes. It would pair beautifully with cheeses, pasta dishes, chicken, and fish, even Thai food. The Sokol Blosser is about $29.98 a bottle. All right, take your taste buds on one delightful adventure with this Tapis Alta Collection Cabernet from Argentina. This wine is made by a very famous winemaker whose resume includes Chateau Petrus in France and Dominus in Napa. An unbelievably good wine at an incredible price of only $19.98 a bottle. I love this wine. Next, an elegant, refined Pinot Noir with delicate layers of flavor and tons of finesse. Say hello to the Portlandia Montazi Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley in Oregon. 
Bing cherry, cocoa, and a hint of spice. Velvety smooth on the palate with nice acidity. I loved it. A very special wine for a special meal at $39.98 a bottle. Up next, a Zinfandel that I absolutely adored. This is the Brady Zen from Paso Robles. This wine delivers flavors of ripe jammy raspberries, rich vanilla, and cracked black pepper. The winemaker is originally from Texas, which explains the pretty blue bonnet on the label. This wine is now a regular on my table. It's a fantastic find. The Brady Zen is about $19.98 a bottle. As always, I found all my wines right here at HEB. When visiting Houston, the Good Taste team loves to stay at the beautiful Royal Sinesta, right in the heart of Uptown, conveniently located near the Galleria. We love bringing you all the faces and places that make dining out so special. From incredible food to unforgettable people. We want to thank you for coming along and being a part of Good Taste each and every week. Follow us on Instagram at Good Taste TV. Sign up for our newsletter and you'll get the delicious recipes you see each week right to your inbox. We also want to thank all of our amazing sponsors for making this season possible. And thank you for being here each and every week. We look forward to seeing you right here again next week for more Good Taste. Cheers. I'll hold the bottle for you, ready? One, two, three. Woo!